gosh. Oh my gosh. Never again. Never again. I need. I need. Yeah, I, I, I'm done. The embrace I'm done. I, I, don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I think that the DLC is too hard for it to be fun. So if you've played a video game for more than five minutes, you've probably been hit with the terms scale issue or get good at some point in time, which basically means you suck at video games. I don't know where skill issue came from, but I know for a fact that get good came straight from the Dark Souls community. The term has pretty much lost all its meaning and is just used as an insult to troll people, but at the time there was a genuine positive like philosophy behind it. Basically, it just means there's no special technique or shortcut that will save you. You just gotta sit down, put in the work it takes through trial and error, and through intuition and learning you'll eventually overcome the obstacles. Basically, just get good, simple as that. Honestly, after playing Elden Ring DLC, I think the community has misconstrued this mentality and it's actually rotted gamers' brains worse than Melania did Radon. Souls players are just mentally flawed in their thinking and this DLC exposes that. This tryhard mentality is literally hurting people during their playthrough. Playing like a tryhard is just burning people out of Souls game and difficulty in video games in general. So Saddle of the Urn Tree, if you haven't heard, is new Elden Ring DLC and it's basically a whole part two of the base game in terms of content. Not much is different from the base game, it's just more Elden Ring. More weapons, exploration, spells. Terror incarnate. There is life in me yet. I will soon feast upon your heart. Mark my words, you too shall know fear. <laughs> Insane NPCs, everything. It's just like the original game, but on steroids and crack. The difference with this DLC is that in an effort to challenge the player base and not have you just steamrolling everything with your OP builds, they left these things called sacred fragments scattered all around the map and just overtuned the shit out of everything. So it's basically a level cap based on exploration. If you want to have a smooth ride playing the DLC, collecting these is straight up mandatory. Basically, this is the creators doubling down on the lesson they've been trying to tell us since the base game, the first time you laid eyes on that tree sentinel. If things are too difficult, change your strategy, find some new weapons, go level up, just go explore bro. And if you want to bang your head against the wall, you can do that, it's your choice. Is the DLC too hard? No, not necessarily. In fact, the game could be really easy if you choose to make it that way, just engaging with the tools and mechanics provided by the developers. But time after time, we refuse. We opt out to play in a counterintuitive way and wonder why we aren't having a good time. Sure, it could be argued that the approach to game design is not your cup of tea compared to original Souls games where you just gotta get good. But you can't turn around and say this game's too difficult if you haven't even attempted to summon People are just way too ignorant to how the game works to be able to say a blatant statement like this game is too hard. This is not flawed game design, it's a matter of pride and ego. You could say that the problem people have with Elden Ring DLC is that it goes against the very nature of a hardcore Souls player. But you see, playing the DLC with no help, no reverted spirit ashes, no shadow blessing or whatever limitations you've placed on yourself is only hindering your own gaming experience. And honestly, doing a solo challenge run without any shadow blessings, it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it didn't make a sound. Like, you're the tree basically. Nobody cares. It's irrelevant. So it's really only yourself you're fighting against in this game. Sure, a streamer might get clowned if they beat the game in an easy way because they're a public figure, but what are you fighting for? If there's something that this video game has taught me is that people would rather die than let their pride alone. And it's the same thing in a video game. You just die over and over and over again because you can't let go of that pride. It's almost as if this Miyazaki guy accidentally made like a real artistic statement with this video game. I don't know if he did it on purpose or not. He's basically exposed gamer flawed mentality when it comes to these challenges. 
and how fragile our egos are by simply giving us an ultimatum. It's supposed to be a game for fun. You're supposed to use the, all these new weapons, spirit ash arts. Basically, you're meant to cheese the game in, in Elden Ring. That the DLC is too hard for it to be fun. A few moments later. That's right. Yep. Fat roll? Absolutely. So, the problem was dodging, and so we removed the need for it. All right, we figured it out. Honestly, the psychology of a hardcore Soulsborne player is dead ass something that should be studied in a psychology book. The situation with this game kind of reminds me of a feeling I had when I played the first playthrough of the first Nier Replicant by Yoro Taro. You know that guy's crazy, but he had this quest in that game. Let me tell you, this quest is pure hell. Basically, I was trying to be a completionist and complete every quest, and this quest stopped me in my tracks. Basically, you're supposed to get these pink sunflower seeds for a farmer, but you can't just get these seeds. You gotta grow them. RNG is ridiculous. It took me like a month to do this, and let me tell you, it was not worth it. I postponed the main story just to get this done, and I don't even think I got really anything from it or even like a trophy. So. I'm pretty sure Yoko Taro did that to troll completionists and beat that mentality out of us and it worked. I'm not gonna complete shit unless I'm actually feeling the game or I'm having fun doing it. And you know, the same way that game taught me a lesson, this game is teaching me a lesson in that tryharding is, a, it's just kind of pointless. Really pointless if you're not having fun while doing it. So I feel like Miyazaki kind of accidentally made a statement with this game the same way that game made a statement. It's a game for fun, exploration, and using everything at your disposal. The complete opposite of a Soulsborne player. What's funny is when I first beat Elden Ring, I did play the game like that. I pretty much played it completely co-op with my friends. I spammed the magician, spam spells. My excuse was, I've played all the Dark Souls games. Now it's time to have fun. And for some reason, I reverted back to my tryhard mentality with this DLC, opting for a solo run. Ironically, I'm part of the problem. So. I think I've learned my lesson though. I'm still gonna complete my solo run, but when I get to the final boss, I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably spear summoning. What is impressive about the DLC though is it really recreates the exact same experience you'll have when you first played Elden Ring, which is a pretty big feat. Not many games can do that. Just reset your whole mentality on why you enjoyed the game. However, the Shadow Blessing is a very in-your-face mechanic that cannot be ignored. Whether you like that or not is up to you, but at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say with this DLC is that you should not just get good, you should go explore, bro. This DLC is a masterpiece. I think everybody should try Elden Ring at least once, and if it looks too hard for you, don't play like a streamer, use your spirit ashes, summon teammates, I'm honestly of the belief that this game, Elden Ring in particular, was never meant to be a get good game, or at least that's not all there is to it. You're meant to find solutions to your problem. That's the main takeaway from Souls games, and it doesn't just stop at sitting there and banging your head at the wall to get good. You have other options, and this game is meant to explore all those options to the maximum ability of a Souls game. And yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say. Peace.